Hello everyone, we are live yet again. This is one of my author's chats of the week and in just a moment, I'll wait for my co-host, we'll get things started. We'll be talking about books, writing, publishing, and everything in between. And I uh, hope everybody's been enjoying their Halloween week, the end of spooky season. And as a fantasy author who also enjoys the darker side of fantasy and uh, the horror genre as well, it's uh, kind of a bittersweet ending to that time. I've been trying to binge watch all my favorite movies and shows for the season. Hi. Whoa, wait, hold on. I'm trying to figure out why it did the group mode. I've never seen it do that before. Hmm. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna try to figure out why it went to group mode. Let me see if there is a way for me to adjust that. Interesting. <laughs> this is a first for me. So I'm trying to see if I can uh, adjust it so it's just us. You have to change the number of people allowed, I think. I've never seen that before. Wait, wait, wait. Interesting. I'm trying to figure it out. But how are you? I'm hanging in there fighting a cold, so that's fun. <laughs> there. Wait, I think I got it. I think I got it. Well, almost. <laughs> I don't know why it's trying to do a panel, but I'm sorry that you're dealing with a cold. Give me, bear with me one more moment to see if I can figure this one out. And uh, I don't want to disconnect guests. I will figure this. Interesting. I want. Huh. I don't know. That is so strange. Well, anywho, we'll continue on this way and I will have to Google this at some point to figure out why it's not letting me have just the two of us. Anywho, uh, hi, how are you? And uh, for normally I let people, uh, my co-hosts start and introduce yourself and what you write and we kind of carry on from there. Okay. I'll just uh, invite some peoples, like all the peoples. <laughs> all the peoples. I love all the peoples. Absolutely. Yeah. So like last night I was at work cause I work night shift now. And, um, yeah, it was like halfway through my shift and I was like, no, I'm getting a cold. <laughs> oh no. I hate that. I absolutely hate that. It's uh, never fun to feel unwell, especially, well, I don't know. Do you want to feel unwell at work or on your day off? <laughs> I know, and today is my day off, so it was but the worst of both worlds, apparently, for me. <laughs> well, I'm so, I am sorry to hear that, but uh, I'm glad, I'm very happy that you're here today and able to uh, hang out for a little bit, and we'll be talking about all things books. But yeah, as you're inviting uh, people, why don't you introduce yourself and what you write? Sure. Um, so my name is Jenny Allen, um, an author and an artist, and I write a supernatural forensic thriller series is my main series. Um, and recently um, started writing novellas that are prequels in the same world, but they take place in medieval Romania. Um, so the first one of those is getting ready to release on November 11th. So. Oh, that's exciting. An upcoming release. I always love that. And uh, you, for a prequel series, what made you decide to kind of jump backwards uh, for your this next little series of your work? Well, I have these two characters in the main series, um, Luminita and Aaron. Um, Aaron is a vampire who's quite old, and uh, Luminita is a different race that I've kind of brought into the world, which is called the Durand. Um, and they feed on emotion, um, and that's how they sustain themselves, and they can sense emotion from people um they're also a very long-lived race and i knew forever that they met back in ancient romania um and when i started writing book five in the series that's coming out next year they were more involved together in that book and i was i just i just had this obsession with them i had to tell their whole story um so the novella series is a very slow villain arc which is fantastic I love a good villain arc, and uh, it is it is always fascinating to f find out why a person or a character or entity uh, goes a route, if good or bad, or, you know, the, again, the morally gray in between, but what makes them them? 
and then the repercussions of those choices, be it their own or be outside choices that kind of forced them along their path. But no, that's that's really neat. Yeah, it's it's been wild. Like I started writing the first novella at the beginning of August, um, and I'm currently twenty six thousand words into the fourth one. Wow. So when I say obsessed, I truly mean it. <laughs> that's fantastic. How how long are your books usually? Um, my main series, the books range between like about 430 pages to almost 500. Mm -hmm. Like they're not small books. Um, the first novella, uh, which is, I actually have the art copy right here. So this is, this is the first novella, which is Draga and the Savage Draga Beat. Um, this one is, is a little short guy. He's about 125 pages, I think. Um, the other ones are more about 140. They're a little bit longer. They ride that line just below what qualifies as a novella. <laughs> hey, no, that's fine. I mean, that's the thing is uh, I was talking to various readers because I do have a novella series. And so trying to explain the length of a novella and all that. But there are smaller ca categories like the novelette, which is just a cute little name. Um, and the again, all the little bracketing down because there's so many ways to tell stories and you could be a very... Um, wordy author and that could be very great you know descriptive and you have immersive worlds and you want to stay in there forever and then sometimes there are people who just love the flash fiction the quick snappy and we're done let's go to the next one so every yeah. story has its that right spot <laughs> it really does i mean uh, it's funny though the second installment is uh dracul which revolves around vlad dracul um the impaler but the story is so critical to how they become who they are Mm -hmm. um, it wound up taking much longer than I thought. So it's broken into three parts. Okay, <laughs> don't be well, uh, in the fantasy realm, Tolkien kind of did that with his book because the, the Lord of the Rings trilogy was supposed to be one book, but it was too big to print in one binding at the time. So that's why we got the three, the three <laughs> versus the one, which would have been a very, very big book. <laughs> Yes, at least the novellas, uh, eventually, um, the Dracul three parts, I will put together in one very special edition with a bunch of really cool stuff. Because um, there's so much research that went into that whole, whole bit. Anyways. I bet. I bet. Have you ever done a special edition before? Because that's something that I'm looking to start doing for some uh, certain book series that I've written next year probably toward the latter half so that's why i'm like starting to gear up and find out you know what printer which printers do what things and where can i you know if i want to go the the foil route the metallic kind of sheens or do i want the uh, built-in bookmarks or the etc so on you know the spread edges like where do you do all that so have you ever done a special edition before i'm working on one right now so um exactly. i have a kickstarter that's going to be launching that's for the audiobooks and the collector's volume one which is going to be a hardback that includes the first two books. It's going to be a pretty big hard hardcover. Um, the reason I did two books in one is because book one and two are currently still with my publisher, which is Fulton mm -hmm. Books, until I can take them out of contract. Um, book one is next year. Book two is the year after. So in order for me to publish a hardcover, mm -hmm. I have to put the two books together because now that is a new book that is no longer covered under their contract. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that. But uh, I do have a special edition cover art piece that from my cover artist, who's fantastic. Um, I'm doing uh, black pages with white font, specialized like chapter headers that have like the original covers kind of faded Ooh. into the paper. Um, extended spicy scenes. I have bonus chapters from different characters, points of view, and an embedded playlist where it'll actually give you a play symbol. And at the bottom of the page, it'll tell you which song to play. That's and fantastic. I, <laughs> it out. So according to my reading speed, it should match the text. <laughs> That's so neat. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you're the second person I've ever talked about, uh, talked to who decided to do that kind of embedded playlist where they had some kind of markers on the, the edge of the paper where you were like, okay, you listen to this now, you listen to this now. Um, but that's, that is a lot of fun. <laughs> we have like printed ones. And then on my website too, I have the actual soundtracks that tell you the page and paragraph number to start each song um, for each of my four books in the main series too. So I have those available, but the special edition will actually have them like embedded in the, in the text, which will be cool. That's 
that is that is fan that's phenomenal that's that's above just cool that is really immer i love these immersive ideas with books and uh, again the soundtracks are a great way be it you know music and song or just the ambient sound soundtracks i've heard some authors doing uh that's a lot it feels like a lot of time and energy to put into that but worthwhile too oh absolutely and i love listening to my soundtracks because i'll i'll vision like those imp those scenes in my head every time and there's certain songs that just make me ball like a baby because it summons that exact scene up and i'm like damn <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect <laughs> When did you start doing the sound, creating your soundtracks? Was it, you know, as you were writing the books or did they come first or after? Like, where did they kind of manifest? Um, when I was writing the first book, uh, Blood Lily, um, there was one particular song that inspired a scene um, that just kind of fit it perfectly. And I timed the scene out to that song specifically. And that's where the idea started. Um, but I, I didn't really do the full playlists and soundtracks and stuff until probably after I finished book two. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was like, you know, I should do that for, you know, more scenes. Like, like there's tons of songs that would fit in different places. It'd be awesome. So I started hunting for songs and found a ton. And apparently I am, I am very drawn to Radiohead. <laughs> <laughs> probably because of the level of emotional torment in my writing. I love that. I love that. Well, back back when I was working on my first series, it's a dark fantasy about shifters and war. I ended up uh, creating a soundtrack, but it was a lot of metal songs. <laughs> yeah, for the like time of my life, it was perfect. It may not be applicable to everybody, but it worked for me to get me in the mood and think about the characters and uh what was going on so <laughs> there's a wide variety like in book one especially there's a lot of like classic rock and stuff like that um which is fantastic my husband actually likes that soundtrack he doesn't like the other ones he's not a fan of modern music fair enough, <laughs> so, fair enough. you know but um yeah it's a lot of fun and now i'm to the point where certain songs um will just inspire scenes randomly when i'm just listening like i was sitting at work one day earbuds in do, working on a you know, different um, documentation reports and stuff. Mm -hmm. And this song came on, it was by Passenger called And I Love Her. And this whole ending of book four just unfolded in for my eyes. And I'm just sitting there bawling my eyes out. <laughs> they were just like, are you okay? I was like, no, I'm really not. <laughs> I'm really not okay. No one's going to be okay after book four. Was, wait, okay, was this a, is this a four book series for the main? Uh, the main is a six book series. Okay, six books. So there was still some, okay, because I wasn't sure if you were crying because um, some of your favorite characters weren't doing okay or what, okay. <laughs> oh, they don't do okay. And um, I, I'm, uh, yeah, I, I don't hold back. <laughs> so I'm not going to, no one actually, well, no main characters I'm alive at the end of four, but it's very close and put it that way. Mm -hmm. So a lot of emotions, but book five's already written. Um, I just have to fine tune things. Um, and then that releases in August 1st next year. And then um, I have book six already plotted out. So I know where that's going and it's going to break my heart into a billion pieces. Oh. <laughs> hey, uh, writing, I'm about to wrap up a series and it's, it's hard because depending on the series, sometimes your characters don't make it to the end. And then there's other factors of you as an author. And then of course, then your readers thereafter have to say goodbye to these characters, unless you are a person who figures out ways like spin-off series or prequels to allow yourself to stay in the, you know, the realm of your world as long as possible. <laughs> exactly what's happening. Um, so two of my characters, Tim and Eileen have already told me that they have their own spinoff series after the main series is done. So a lot of the main characters from the main series will reappear in Tim and Eileen's spinoff series. So uh, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Hey, that's good. Yeah. It's gonna be great. I mean, here's the thing. If you spend all that time developing your characters or your, um, your world, if you're developing, like you said, a new particular race of being for yours and 
it takes a lot of energy to go and do that all again for something else. I am that person to rewrite the world literally each time, but it takes a lot of time and energy. And so I'm envious when people allow themselves to immerse themselves even longer. <laughs> And then the world has so much more to offer. Like, I feel like I've only scratched the surface with the main series because it all revolves around my interpretation of vampires, which is very different, mm -hmm. and the Durand. So it revolves completely around them. And it does bring in uh, mythos and stuff of different types of creatures, but it's all tied back to those two uh, species. So there's so much more to explore in that world. And uh, Tim and Eileen's series will be really cool because she's a human FBI agent and he's um, a half-blood vampire, but ex-special forces. And it'll give me more of an ability to do a supernatural style mm -hmm. of book series where they can investigate different types of creatures and really fill that world out, which will be cool. That is neat. I love that. And you said the on the 11th of... November, so that's right around the corner. You're yeah. releasing the, your uh, novella? Yeah, my novella, my pretty, pretty. It's so pretty. <laughs> it's gotten so many great reviews so far from our creators. Like it's, it's been hugely flattering. I've gotten like two Anne Rice comparisons that just made me blush. Aww. <laughs> hey, for anybody who writes vampires, that has to be, I, I just, for me, it makes sense. That has to be a high, high compliment. If yeah. you write uh, vampires, especially in kind of an urban setting, but uh, because she did, she she was one of those big forefront people who changed the world of vampire literature. <laughs> oh yeah, like it's it's crazy to me sometimes. Like that's the first time I've gotten the Anne Rice comparison, and I think it's because it's more historical um, medieval fiction than it is cause my current my main series is like modern day supernatural forensic thriller type um but in, in the main series i get the uh early laurel hamilton anita blake comparison which is really also super cool because i adored those books so that's great i love that i absolutely love that and uh it's kind of funny because i have a book release on well my novella release on the 19th i had to like what of november so we're gonna be book release buddies <laughs> And I November 11th because it's my birthday. That's why. <laughs> hey, I like, hey, happy birthday. It's fun to find ways to celebrate a launch, um, especially if it's a has a special meaning for that particular day already to have that second level. For your uh, release, are you going to be doing anything special? Are you just going to be like, it's out in the world, I'm relaxing? Are you going to be working um, to kind of promote it? Um, I haven't really decided yet. <laughs> I've kind of been, um, in, I've been like kind of socially withdrawn as of late. I haven't been on the clock app as much as I usually am. Um, and most of it's because I have Aaron screaming in my head constantly because he's mad at me right now. It's fine. <laughs> Characters. It's fine. Um, he's especially mad at me right now. Cause I just wrote a nightmare sequence for him today. It's like, this is payback for all the times that you've woken me up screaming. Thanks. That's so funny. <laughs> Oh, so I've kind uh, of been stuck yes. in the writing hole lately. So um, I haven't decided if I'm going to do anything really special for the release yet or not. It's okay. I mean, you still have some time to kind of all decide that. So that's that's fine. But yeah, I I wish I was better at book launches and book releases because I'm I love writing and then I love you know getting out there as fast as possible that. I feel like I need to build a bigger buffer of like that middle ground promotional that it's ready. I can show you all the pretty things, but it's not publicly, you know, build the buzz. That's what I feel like I need to be working on. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, having the art readers has helped a lot. Um, I'm still trying to push for pre-orders um, between Amazon and then on my site, I actually have the printed versions that you can pre-order and you get character art with it, which is the new character art that I drew. I draw all my own character art, by the way. Ooh. Um, for Aaron. So this is Aaron. This is the one screaming in my head constantly. Fantastic. Yeah. So you get his his lovely character art with it too. <laughs> That's fun. I yeah, okay. The funny thing is I'm an artist, but I do reverse class painting and specifically for pet portraiture. So very very different i can't really overlap that in uh, when i'm trying to write so i have to go and find people who are talented 
like you to be like, can you do character art? <laughs> can you help me with this? Yeah. Because this is not my talent at all. But um, I, I did I see a that. question mm -hmm. for us pertaining to books asking, uh, what is our favorite aspect of world building? Um, my favorite is because I'm a nurse by trade and I studied forensics in college. Um, I love infusing as much realistic science into the supernatural as possible to kind of demystify them. And that's been my favorite part of like trying to figure out how I can incorporate a scientific explanation for different supernatural creatures. Um, it's been it's been a lot of fun. The only thing that's really truly stumped me so far is I cannot figure out shifters. <laughs> There's just no logical science. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I'm still working on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Again, I, I write second world fantasy, so my shifters, I don't have to go heavy on the science base of how they do what they do. But but it is interesting, like where you can kind of figure out and pool and kind of explain away magic in a more, you know, concurrent, again, urban or modern day scenario. but. Yeah, like that. So, then, what was it that pulled you into the entrance of? Again, you have your vampires, you have your um, your own uh, entities that uh, absorb. You said emotion, and potentially will write other works that kind of incorporate some other kind of paranormal entities. So, where did where did this passion come from for you? Um, I've always loved the supernatural and um, like classic movie monsters and stuff like that. Um, there's always been this aspect to them that's, um, like tragically sad, but I love them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just drawn to it so much. And especially vampires, I've, I've always had a thing for them. Um, but I wanted to like kind of reimagine them and, and figure out how they would, how they could live in our society right now. And we wouldn't really know it with everything at our disposal. Like what would they have to be like? Um, so it wound up taking a lot of their supernatural abilities away from them. So it's pretty much just a, a long life and a good immune system. Um, and they're born, not made. And there's a whole bunch of things mm -hmm. gone into it based on a uh, thalassemia, which is a real blood disorder. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just tried to imagine how they could live and survive in our world and still say, stay secret. Um, but eventually that's not going to be a possibility because facial recognition software and all the things that we have now it's it's getting more and more mm -hmm. impossible to hide so it's been a, it's been a fun journey trying to figure all that out <laughs> that is really neat and to go back to answer the question on my end my one of my favorite aspects of world building and this is kind of really interesting because i'm about i'm kind of heading into that world building stage for two long series and I'm always, I always write things simultaneously because I am that person. I don't, I don't advise it, but I do. <laughs> but I'm doing that world building process. And uh, for me, it's always kind of fun when you're trying to build out, you know, the, the physical world, the geography, figuring out, again, the magic systems. There's so much that comes into when you're doing second world, world building, um, you know, the characters and, you know, what races, what entities you're going to put in there and how they all intermix in their history. And when pieces kind of come together and click in the right spot, those are those ha ha moments. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. And I wish I could explain it more than that kind of vague way, but there are those moments where you really want things to work and you can't figure it out and you're coming up with all these ideas and all of a sudden it just clicks and you're like, that eureka moment <laughs> it's like ooh, that's good write that net now write those notes right now because you don't want to forget about them um but yeah that's that's one of my favorite things i've had a ton of those with working on the novellas because uh, i tried to pull as much real uh history into them as possible mm -hmm. so when i'm digging through all these lives of people back in um these medieval times in romania especially when it comes to the vlad ones um, and all the people surrounding him. It's so cool to find like these different little things. And I'm like, ooh, I can sneak this in right here and I can explain this here and this fits perfectly here. And like trying to form Vlad's personality. And then I was probably halfway through writing the first novella 
and came across this really fascinating paper about the psychology of Vlad and going from his childhood up through his years and how certain events um, shaped the way that he became. And it was like, I freaking nailed it. <laughs> it's like, perfect, perfect perfection. It's exactly what I wanted. So yeah, it's great. <laughs> I love those moments. Well, and it's always, a, uh, I'm a person who loves to base things off myth and mythology. And so anytime kind of figuring out where these ideas came from, what stemmed from what, what inspired what, why did this culture develop this kind of, again, this creature, this entity, this concept. And um, a lot of times they are based on real people or um, real things that the society at the time had to figure out how to explain when they didn't have the understanding. So it is kind of fascinating, for instance, like lycanthropes and uh, there is uh, that um, psychological issue where it's potentially the source of a lot of the concepts of lycanthropes and the moon sickness and trying to become a beast. And I don't know, it, it's just fascinating to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're really cool. So for going towards the marketing side of the writing, oh, we love marketing, don't we? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it's so much fun. But no, um, going to that particular side of it, uh, how do you like to connect with and meet new potential readers? Um, I've met a lot through this clock app, which has been fantastic, whether it's from other authors or um, different reading groups and things like that. And being able to just talk with people one on one, um, like I get there's some people that as they read my book, they'll send me messages throughout at like certain points. And they're like, oh, my God, this. Oh, my God, that. And it's like the best thing ever. I love it so much. Um, and getting to just discuss the characters more and things like that with with readers that just become obsessed and it's awesome um it's a fantastic feeling to have people love your characters as much as you do it's like oh okay i'm not completely insane that's great just, <laughs> just mostly it's fine <laughs> um but i also do a lot of book signing events too um i i really do enjoy those quite a bit too um the my favorite 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 one is sinful signings because it's it's like a home reunion i get to hang out with all my all my people from the clock app um especially my uh three best friends which is uh autumn desi and jen saviano down there in the comments Yay. she's my bestie <laughs> so it's wonderful getting to spend time with everybody at those events well that's that is really neat i i know of sinful signings it's one that a lot of bookish people um especially I think more towards the romance romantic side do attend that particular event. So I, I've heard a lot of good things from uh, people who enjoy that particular one. But yeah, I've, I've recently started getting into doing local conventions and conferences that uh, so cons when it comes to book signings. And that's that is a lot of fun to be able to do that face to face engagement with potential readers. It's fantastic. I, I really do enjoy it a lot. And uh, I get really into it, especially at Sinful. So like this past year, um, I cosplayed for two days. Yes. <laughs> so on Saturday, I was Jen Saviano's main character from her book series, Vana, because we were set up right next to each other. Aww. Uh, hoping to sell her books. And then uh, not that she needs my help because her books are fantastic. But then Sunday, I was cosplaying as my own main character, Lilith, with my uh, CSI hat and stuff, and people got a real kick out of it, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's so much fun. Yeah, the, my, the, uh, a few weeks ago, I was at one, a small one, called um, Multiverse Con, and uh, one of the days, the Saturday, because that was the big full day, I cosplayed as one of my characters, my shield maiden from uh, my Dark Viking Fantasy series, and so... That was a lot of fun, uh, having the big round shield and in the book series, she, um, all the characters have essentially animal shaped guardian spirits, though only one character, not the one I've dressed as, um, can see them. And so I have this big red flaming red hawk on my shoulder as I'm walking around. Everybody's like, nice bird. I'm like, what bird? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to body my character. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I think I'm going to be uh, cosplaying as Luminita this coming year, which should should be interesting. <laughs> well, 
Well, you should develop one. So depending on what you do, if you have, especially have a multi-day event, you could have an outfit each day. And when people come up and ask you like, if you like this, this is who the character is in this book. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, she's one of my favorite character art pieces too. Let me find her quick. There yes. she is. There she is. So it's, it's Lemonita. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, she's um, vicious. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a, a new reader who just, he, he arc read the first novella for me, but he hasn't read my main series. <laughs> and he's, he was the first man to ever message me and be like, can I claim a fictional character as my book girlfriend? And I'm like, <laughs> if girls can do it, guys can do it too. Sure. And he's like, I claim Luminita. And I was just like, okay. <laughs> Oh, this isn't going to go well. <laughs> Fine. I know, Jen. Yes, you are correct. Aaron belongs to you and you alone. It's official. <laughs> hey, that's that's what you want. You want the super fans, uh, be it, you know, your your bookish friends, or as well as the people you've never actually met face to face to love your characters, love your story so much that they're able to talk about it and rave about it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's fantastic. I don't think anyone wants to ever claim Ashcroft. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, he's a great villain, but I don't, mm, hold on. I got his character art too. Yes. I, I, I've drawn most of my characters. Where is he? Oh, there. Of course, he's the last one. So this is Ashcroft. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, Ashcroft is your pet. That's that's more appropriate. <laughs> the, in the main series, it's uh, there you go, is Lilith Adams. So that's my main character. Ah. Yes, I and um, Chance Devereaux, who's the main love interest. Very nice. He's my one of my favorite art pieces, and the crowd favorite, which is Detective Andrew Cohen. <laughs> He's the one that gets the that. poor Cohen mantra all the time. It's his own fault though. So <laughs> I can see that. I can see it. I like that. I feel like you could also, you have the nice big character art, but you could also maximize that and figure out how to make the little, uh, I wish I could do stickers from my own house, but you know, do the little stickers of them that uh, people can, you know, keep around, put on their laptops or their drinking bottles or wherever and keep them close to their heart. <laughs> I have them up here but i guess i don't but i had um i have three stickers for the books right now so i have uh the celasta company logo which is the company lilith works for um so i have that one and then i have it's an anatomical heart cartoon heart and then carved into it it says poor cohen which is the <laughs> mantra of the fans and then um i have the lily tattoo that has a little banner that says lilith underneath it which is the tattoo that chance has that wolf does not know about at first <laughs> 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 which is a, a popular favorite so i have swag bags that are separated between team chance and team cohen that's, I, that's great yeah of course for lilith there is no competition it is only chance but the fans like to argue over it so it's fine Hey, no, that, hey, use that, build into that, lean into that, because uh, it's fun to see. It's fun to see what fans will demand, and uh, even if it's not what might happen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm really especially mean in book four, because there's a nightmare sequence that for a second makes them think maybe it's happening. No, it's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't go well. <laughs> oh no, that's so funny. That is just you know. It's fine. Oh. So uh I, I'm excited that you again going back and reminding everybody that you have a release on the eleventh for your upcoming novella prequel. So that is really, really cool. And I will continue to try to remember to say that because that is really neat. And you gotta remind people who are jumping in all the time. And uh but on top of that, what is one of your favorite <laughs> I'd say it. What is one of your favorite things outside of book signings and um, to favorite things to do to try to market? Like, do you, are you, where do you like to hub when you're trying to market your book? Are you on book talk predominantly? Do you like to go? Yeah. 
pretty much yeah i don't get much traction on facebook um i'm only on instagram because when i post on facebook it goes to instagram and the same with threads <laughs> i don't really pay attention to them that much um so it's mostly here on the clock app um because i've, I've just found this amazing community here that's so so supportive like um just a couple weeks ago i did a um 12 hour live with jeremy meringue and jacob storm and we were raising money for medical bills for one of our really good friends and wow. pillars of the book talk community and we raised um close to it was i think a dollar shy of three thousand nine hundred dollars that day wow that like, is fantastic <laughs> yeah that is fantastic and that's the thing is like i i love this i love this platform um because it is one, at least personally, kind of like what you were saying, it's one that has such a vibrant community and they're all helpful. They're easy to, you know, get to meet and communicate with in various ways. I mean, you can live stream, you can message, you can, you know, comment, all that kind of stuff, but you do develop over time these kind of real, I mean, they are, they're real friendships. That oh, yeah. uh, it's something that I've not found a lot of that level of interaction from the other platforms. So I agree completely. And I do see the comment that popped up a moment ago from Jen saying, I only, I'm sorry, I see one that's saying only go on threads to follow people back. I've never actually been on threads yet. And I also see her a little earlier, that was the one I meant, was uh, release the character art of that particular scene, <laughs> wink, <laughs> and watch them go feral. <laughs> uh, I mean, I might have to do that at some point and draw the. The nightmare sequence from Cohen and Lilith. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're going to go feral enough when I finally finish the um, uh, Luminita and Aaron spicy, spicy scene from the first novella, which I'm close to finishing. I just have to finish Aaron's face. <laughs> That's really cool. That is fantastic. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, are those so when you when you have your character art, is that something that you send out? Uh, actually, let me reword it this way. Do you sell through like a uh, direct through the clock app? Like how do you distribute your character art to readers? Um, I have them, I have sets of them up on um, my website, which is jennyallenbooks.com. With certain releases, I'll do special edition pieces that are for that release. Um, so people that pre-order get them. So that's like the Aaron character art that I showed you yes. um, for the novella. And when book four came out, um, in book four, they're kind of on the run and Lilith has to bleach her hair, which she's real pissed about. But I really wanted to do a blonde Lilith piece. And this is the one that took me the longest. So it was 121 hours of draw time. But this is Lilith as a blonde. Wow. <laughs> so that, um, that one came with um, anyone who bought book four got this. And then they got a special pack of tissues with a, with a um, sticker on it. <laughs> with the Celasta logo that says yes. um, temporary author reader support. Um, so it spells out tears, basically. Oh, that's so great. I because I keep telling people it's like when you when you if you write, you know, depending on like the tragic scenes or you wrapping up a series, I, I always wanted someone to send out little packs of tissues. And uh, it's something that I was considering with like, when I wrap up my current series, I'm like, are you ready? <laughs> It's needed. It's it's valid. Like I've never cried so much writing ever. I was writing book four, like the last five chapters. I had to I there were so many typos, first of all, because blinding tears. I'm just typing like a mad woman. And it I had to take like a week or two before I could actually have the emotional yeah. fortitude to go back in and edit those chapters. <laughs> like they were traumatizing. <laughs> that was needed. It was totally needed. No, that's, that's, hey, no, that's fantastic. Because again, you want to draw one thing as I'm assuming again, most authors, so I can only speak from my own experience, but we want to develop those intimate connections with our readers through our story, through our characters, we want them to feel they could feel happy, they could be mad, they could be traumatized and sad, but they want them to feel. <laughs> absolutely that is always my goal like um drawing on all of those strong emotions and then incorporating mental health like those are two huge aspects of my writing <laughs> okay now going off and <laughs> this is a weird one i always come up with weird ideas in these chats going off from your concept of embedding which is so cool embedding your soundtrack and having the symbols so people can match 
songs to the exact well, place where they can start playing it. That's really neat. Now I see this like sticker sheet of like emotional emojis and like little circles within like the boundaries of the book and saying, put the sticker there of how you feel. <laughs> how does this make you feel? Oh, that'd be good. That'd be good. <laughs> yeah, rate your level of tears from zero to 10. <laughs> <laughs> where, oh my goodness, that would be hysterical. Or, or you could do it on like a bookmark where you have like the pay, the chapters and say, put the little stickers in like, where, which, how did this chapter make you feel? <laughs> do we need to talk about it? <laughs> a little health check-in. Yes. Oh, man. But uh, since the hour's running by, I do want to always ask a couple questions uh, in the off chance that this app will allow me to repurpose this on my YouTube channel, which more often than not, it does. <clears throat> Voicing on scratchy there, but sometimes it doesn't. Um, and I'll make sure I put all your contact information below uh, the, the YouTube so people can continue to find and follow you and all that kind of stuff. But we kind of briefly mentioned it earlier, but outside of Book Talk, you said you're on instagram facebook x and i thought there was one other just threads not threads. x yeah okay. and you have your website you said and uh do you do you have a newsletter or anything like that oh uh, i did one issue okay. of a newsletter <laughs> and i haven't done it again so i'm okay. really really bad about it um i do put lots of regular updates on my website so my website is not just a store for books so I have all the news up there, all my book signing events coming up, um, all the news right now, especially on um, the start of the audiobook projects, because they start recording Blood Lily um, next month. Woo! Um, I already have one narrator that's working on the first novella audiobook, who's so crazy talented. His audition was absolutely flawless. So Sean Crisden is is going to be the voice of Aaron for um, my main series and for the novellas, which is fantastic. Um, but Blood, Blood Lily is a multicast, so it's going to have five different narrators for nice. For the page who was down in the comments earlier. <laughs> so it's, it's really cool. I'm blessed to work with some super talented people. Now um, let me ask you because I have one one of my novelas was a full cast, but uh, that company was kind of new at it. And so it took a long time. So we decided to part ways because I couldn't wait. That means years and years, you know, wait between uh, projects because I know some other people who do casts uh, can do them quicker. So how are you arranging your cast behind the scenes? This is just a personal, I'm just curious question because if you have four or five voices, like who's in charge of putting it all together and what platform is, you know, what, how, how is that working? Question mark for you. Um, so my main narrator is uh, Blanca Frappier. Um, yes, I love her. <laughs> love Blanca. Um, so she is actually going to be the sound engineer for this whole thing. So she's organizing all of it. Um, all my other narrators have to do is give her raw audio and she's going to put it all together and make it fantastic. Um, she just finished doing this with the beta by Avon Michaels as well, um, with, with her and Jack Hill and Sean Crisden, who all three of them are on my project too. That's <laughs> great. Really cool. Um, so a lot of it's with Blanca organizing it. Um, we have a group Google drive, um, where I prepare all the documents and manuscripts for them. Um, cause I want to support my, my narrators as much as possible. So. Mm -hmm. I have individual manuscripts highlighted with them specifically for different characters or different accents and stuff like that for each one. And they're all put up on the Google Drive and that's where they'll dump their audio there as well. And then we have um, private channels on my Discord um, where we can actually talk and share information back and forth. And sometimes we just chit chat and have fun, <laughs> which is really cool. So um, we, we keep in pretty good contact for almost all of them. Um, so it's, it's nice that I can, I can reach out to them at any time and, and vice versa. So if they have any questions, they can reach me too. So. Yes. I love that. Yeah. Blanca Frappe, uh, she is my narrator for my YA series and that's the one where it's a magical multiverse, huge cast of characters. And since for hers, that particular one, she's doing it all. And so the amount of, uh, brain she has to change her voice to all these entities, all these characters for this big cast, it's wild. So she's very, very talented and a great choice uh, for your series as well. And that's exciting. I'm excited for you to be able to get into that project and be able to release 
it in that uh, very kind of, again, that dimensional way where you're going to have different people voice your different characters. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it started with the fact that I knew Cohen had to have his own voice because he's such a crowd favorite. Um, he's going to be voiced by Ethan Gray, which is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, Chance, who's the main love interest, and most of the little tiny side male characters is going to be Jack Hill, which is Uncle Copper. Um, and then um, Ashcroft and Spencer, um, so Ashcroft being one of my villains, is P PJ Freeborn. Um, and then Paige is coming in at the very end to voice the Siren, um, who has a much bigger part in book two, um, which is going to be amazing. But yeah, it's, it's really, really neat. So book two, I will add Luminita, which um, currently is Molly Rock is going to be voicing her. And then when we get into book three, Sean will join us in the main series with the voice of Aaron and stuff, too. So it's uh, eventually I'll have eight <laughs> Mary involved. <laughs> So yeah, oh, and Allie Dane, she's going to join us in book three as well as Eileen Hirsch. So that's so cool. That is yeah. neat, and a lot of work. It sounds like on your end, and you know, but I bet it's going to pay off because I can just I can imagine <laughs> that cast coming together. It's fantastic, and they all like kind of know each other on some level, and and it's it's been really cool. Um, one of the things that impressed me the most was uh, was Sean when he sent his audition for Aaron from the first novella. Which is so damn good. Um, and I absolutely gushed in my email back to him. I was like, I've listened to it four times. I've cried every time. You're fantastic. I have zero notes for you. Everything was perfect. Like, <laughs> absolutely perfect. And his response to me was, um, thank you, but my performance is merely a reflection of how much I enjoyed your writing. And said thank you when I gave him the part in Romanian. <laughs> so brownie points. <laughs> yeah, so it's been a really cool experience getting getting to know them too. So. Oh yeah, and um, the uh, the <clears throat> audiobook narrating narrator community is such a fun one on here too. So if anybody's listening to this and has not checked them out, uh, definitely try to poke your head because it is interesting to see some of them uh, do their lot. You know demos or you know practice runs of whatever they're working on or teasers of what they're working on and just to kind of hear them and their skill set in something that i know i do not have this is why i do not even dare to attempt to narrate my own book <laughs> i almost did i almost did um, i actually was considering voicing lumini to myself and if things don't work out with molly if she's not able to do it then i might still do it myself because I've been practicing my Romanian a lot, but um, it'd be cool. But I just can't get into full time narration because I, I have too many jobs as it is. Yes, artist, author. I, hey, I'm with you there. And then you know, if you're doing anything on top of that, and you know, trying to have a you know theoretical social life, and <laughs> yep, it's a lot. <laughs> it can be. Um, let me actually also ask: Where can people find and get your books? Like, do you are you exclusive through Amazon? Do you sell through your website? Are you wide? Like, where can people get your books if they can't find you at a live event? <laughs> uh, anywhere you can order books, you can order my books. Um, they are on Amazon as well, um, but also like Apple um, Apple Books, um, eBooks are everywhere. Um, I do sell signed copies with swag on my website. Um, I also yeah. offer like the four book as a set where you can get it a little cheaper um, on there as well. And um, like I said, I always have pre-orders and stuff going on there for two, but this is book one, this is Blood Bully. Um, and then uh, the one that just released in July is is book four, I just hit myself in the face, uh, is Ghost Orchid. One of my favorite covers. I love all my covers. My cover guy is amazing. Like the Lotus Tree is a pretty popular cover too. Ooh, very nice. Yeah. He does fantastic work. <laughs> hey, that's what you want. You you do want those eye catching covers because even though we we try not to judge a book by its cover, but that is part of it. That you need that that thing that you're like, ooh, what is that? <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> I totally judge books by their covers. <laughs> I don't even pretend. 
but he, what? he blew me away with this one with the the novella because like it's That's it's pretty. It's gorgeous. And um, all the novellas will have a similar kind of cover with the mm -hmm. flowers. But um, for Dracul, it'll be black roses instead of white. Um, and then a different symbol instead of the, the chalice. So it's going to be like whatever's important in that book is mm -hmm. going to be that one focal point, which is cool. I like things to look good together. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Like the main series, all the covers are black, red, orange, yellow, that color scheme. Mm -hmm. like, they all go together. So. Well, that's the thing is, you want, if you're writing a series, you want them to look like they're supposed to belong together. And so the trick is, how do you make, you know, depending on what you're writing, unique enough yet, uh, you know, stick together, being thematic of whatever you're trying to write, and uh, et cetera, so on. I do see a question that went out, popped up when I was um, speaking, saying, do you start, did you start uh, Vlad's character art? I did start drawing the outline last night at work. <laughs> <laughs> but mostly because I couldn't work on um, Luminita and Aaron's character art at work because it's it's not suitable for there. Fair, fair. Fine. <laughs> I mean, I drew it, so it's still classy, like seriously. But you know, there is suggestive positioning and some nudity, so yep. you know. Yep that that good old that good old spice. Yeah. It is. I'll just say it is. <laughs> I don't write spice, but it's hysterical for me when I'm watching um, people who write romanticy or especially the spicier side of things, even if it's not on the fantasy side. And they're doing these book bundles, and they're like, you know, what what part of the character art can I show you? <laughs> I'm gonna have to blur some parts out in order to like advertise that I have that at all. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, that's fine. It's fine. But um, just like the spice in my books, it's still super classy. I focus on emotions a lot um, more so than physical acts because yeah. we know how it all works. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, let me ask because they have about nine ish minutes left in the hour. And this is something I always like to ask my co host. Um, so, you as well as anybody else who's listening. Is there any topic that you wanted to cover today that we never got to so far or question that you had that you didn't get to ask or any announcements? Um, Sorry, it's a, it's a very big, vague question with multiple parts. I, <laughs> um, I, I don't I don't I don't have any real announcements other than uh, I finally put up all the events on my website for what I'm doing next year in 2025, which apparently I'm going to be in Virginia a lot. Ooh. So there's that um that's not terribly far away <laughs> oh um as for the releases like you know, november 11th is the first of the novellas so Thragabit comes out november 11th um dracul part one will come out in um i think march and then um august 1st is going to be the release of book five in the main series which is wormwood and um that will actually be available at Sinful Signings, which is, I want to say, July 17th, 19th. Okay. Um, so the first place you'll be able to buy physical copies as my mm -hmm. big, huge release party is going to be Sinful Signings for book Aww. five, which will be cool. So that everyone else needs to wait till August 1st. <laughs> I like that. That is neat. And uh, that's great. I feel like if you don't already do it, you on your your novella, I know it's not the main series, but on your novella co cover, it was white roses, correct? And um, was there any, sorry, was there any blood on it? I couldn't tell because again, I have like, okay, I thought so. I'm looking at the ring light through to look at the phone and that's why I was like kind of squinting. But yes, so I can imagine you having a big bouquet of white flowers dripped in red on your table. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah yeah and flowers are kind of a thing so like the main series it's all flower plant names so mm -hmm. it's blood lily rose of jericho uh the lotus tree uh ghost orchid wormwood and then the sixth book would be hellebore mm. um so, and then when i go into the spinoff series with tim and eileen they're going to be bird names so the first one is going to be um falcon and the wren that's Ooh, I like that <laughs> So yeah, it's gonna be pretty neat. Like I love having themes. So yeah. Yes, uh, yes. I see Jen saying, "See Jen, there you go. Flower set up. I, that's what I think. I could see it. I could see it. you could do it very beautiful, and again, catch the eye. And it doesn't necessarily take up space. You could do the fake, uh, fake rose petals or something. You know, it doesn't have to take up so much of retail space, but just little details, little details. 
again, starting to get used to doing these kind of face to face events. And so I'm trying to learn from other people on how much uh, eye catching little propish stuff do you put on it versus just your books on your tables to make it look kind of, again, appealing, catching the eye. Um, A lot. My setup is usually bigger than other people's because I don't just have my books. I have my art and stuff, too. So um, so I do wood burning. I do wood burning Ooh. signs and stuff all freehand. Um, usually they're funny sayings like um, drink, drink wine, read a book and don't be a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Things like that. You know, they're funny. Um, people love them. But I make like little funny bottles, too, that are decorative that light up like uh, tears of my readers and stuff. Um, screams of my enemies, things like that. Um, and I usually have other things too, like little crowns and stuff like that. So I, I have more than just books at my setup typically, which is, I need to pare down. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah, especially if you're traveling to, you know, any length of distance that, yeah, that can be a, be a lot. And I do see a Jen po popping up with a suggestion of book page roses, which again, anything that's like, again, those bookmarks that, especially stuff, if you kind of figure out how to do it yourself and it's just different than what you usually see from someone catching the eye. But yes, the more you have, the more you have to lug around. <laughs> very true. It's very true. So yeah. That's cool. <laughs> and uh, so that that is exciting. And so simple signings is in July, you said? Mm -hmm. That's cool. Um, before that, I'm at um, Dark Drafts in Mountjoy, Pennsylvania in January. Um, that's going to be a really cool one at a haunted brewery. Ooh. Um, and then in March, it's AuthorCon down in Virginia, which is a massive, massive event. Um, and Miss Jen Saviano will be sharing a table with me there. So it's going to be really cool. She gets to meet <laughs> my other besties down there. Um, and then I have, I'm also at Lust in the City and Sass and Fright Reads and Halfway to Halloween. So it's, it's a lot. <laughs> your year? Your year sounds like it's a uh, pretty pretty full <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's a pretty full one this year so yeah those kind of things are fun so it, yes it can be qualified as work but you, i it's a workcation for me anytime i go to those events it's because you you have fun with you know your fellow authors and meeting people and the readers and depending on your event you know there are other things to do in and around it's it's good time Oh yeah. And every event I'm doing in Virginia, I'm doing with Jen Saviano. So it's going to be a great event just because I get to see her face. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. There's a, in, there's a dragon con in Atlanta in August of uh, September. So over Labor Day weekend. And uh, this past year, one of my book talk buddies and I, we shared a table to sell one, one of the, at one of the day events and uh, had so much fun doing it because we were like talking about each other's work that we're like, we'll do it again next year. We're gonna try to be at the same table and be table buddies. <laughs> I've always wanted to do drag Dragon Con. I used to live down in Chattanooga, so it was a lot more feasible back then. Yes, again, mm -hmm. travel, travel expenses. And that's the only thing is I'm, I'm all mine right now are kind of in and around uh, Georgia for like the selling aspect just because that's easy for me. That's where I am. Anything beyond that, I'm a little more hesitant because I'm like, okay, now we're talking about hours and that's travel and gas and et cetera, so on. And it's just like, hmm. <laughs> yep, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Wait, weighing the time, weighing the time. But yeah, no, it is, those are fun. And having a, and you're very smart to have your year planned out in advance because if readers so choose and they want to be there and meet you in person, they can plan out too. And I need to be better at that. <laughs> I need to start putting links on my uh, page, my event page too, where they can actually just go and buy tickets. Yes. I haven't gotten that far yet, but I should, I should do that. Yeah, that's one of the things that I have I have done that in the past. Once I kind of establish, okay, this is what I am. And if I'm uh, again, doing the convention things, I'm usually on panels. So once I get that schedule, I make sure I have that on there. So I was like, hey, if you are attending, you could see me here, here, or at my booth. Yes, yes. <laughs> I love doing panels. I got to do one this past year at Fright Reads. So they finally let me have my own panel. Um, and I did one on the psychology of horror, and it was fantastic. We had so much fun and just really cool conversations about it. So it was awesome. <laughs> I love that mental is. health. is a big thing for me, so... Ah, uh, yeah, and that that would definitely be a very intriguing conversation about um, 
you know, the mental health aspect for characters in horror scenarios. So uh, it would have been something I would have wanted to attend. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, well have to do a, anybody... a live panel sometime. It'll be cool. Hey, there you go. You never know. We could be at the same event one day. Yes. <laughs> it is possible. It is possible. But uh, since the hour has pretty much wrapped up, if anybody else has any questions, this is your time to ask. And if not, thank you for hanging out for this uh, with me for this past hour. And I've been loving getting to know you and your books and i've kind of seen you around but it's been nice to actually talk to you <laughs> on a, a virtual face-to-face -face. <laughs> absolutely yeah no it's been a lot of fun thank you and if you ever want to do another of these i, I play them in advance but i do them weekly and uh, i will let you know if i'm able to repurpose this on youtube yeah absolutely because you never know. I never know if it helps, but I like the idea that someone gets discovered by a, super, a future super fan. Right. That way. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I used to do YouTube videos and stuff back when I used to do Facebook Live um, in 2020. Mm -hmm. The whole pandemic stuff. Um, but I haven't touched it since then. I did them for like uh, maybe six months and then I just stopped. <laughs> It's okay. It's we only have so much time and energy in a day, and so I I'm becoming as much of a master at repurposing things. So if I'm you know filming something here, I'll post it somewhere else so that people can hopefully, if they want to, you know, find learn or, or if someone's listened in on chat and was like, ooh, I missed that, missed that memo, and then they're like, wait, I can go back and listen to it. I'm like, yes, you can. So that's the idea. But anywho, um, thank you for talking and hanging out with me tonight. I hope you feel a little better because I know you were kind of feeling a little under the weather and uh, we nobody wants that. So feel better. It's Halloween tomorrow. <laughs> oh, but I'm working tomorrow. So that's not fun. No. The hubby's taking the kids out trick-or-treating. So Aww. I'll be in. Well, uh, sorry that you had to work. So I forgot you mentioned that you do more of the night shift stuff, but I will be sending your kids good vibes and hopefully they get all the candy they want and none of the ones they don't want. <laughs> yep. And it, thankfully the animal won't be stealing it from them this year. So that's fine. <laughs> Yay. But anywho, thank you truly for coming and hanging out. And uh, it's time for me to go let out my dog because I hear him pacing. But <laughs> lovely talking with you. And for everybody who's listened, thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight. I thank you for having me too. Thank you. Bye.